The word resilience, it crops up all the time. But what does it really mean? It's derived from a Latin word meaning to jump back, recoil. So concretely, it describes the ability to recover from a shock or difficulties when the event occurs and after the fact, too. So its definition is to withstand a crisis and bounce back, just as strong or stronger than before. The concept of resilience has been regularly put under the human sciences microscope in the 20th and 21st century, especially in the area of psychology, although it's seeped into almost every area of society, including the construction sector. More concretely, what does the term resilience actually mean? And how is this idea reinventing the world of tomorrow? I'm James. And I'm Amy. Together, let's decode the ideas that are shaping the future of sustainable construction. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future. Global warming has prompted an increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme weather phenomena. Heat waves, droughts, floods... Due to these disruptive events, the subject of building vulnerability has become a major topic, one that can even impact the health, safety, and comfort of occupants. So to tackle these risks, the construction industry is more and more concerned with the concept of resilience. By way of example, when we are faced with extreme temperatures, if we have to switch on the AC or heating, it means that the building is poorly adapted to the climate. It is not very resilient. Generally speaking, if a building maintains a comfortable environment for its occupants, whatever the external conditions are, it is considered resilient. But to achieve this, Amy, it's important to understand the local conditions and any potential risks. Absolutely, James. Having a clear idea of all the risks a building is exposed to helps to keep it in good working order, put in place strategies to minimize damage, and adapt to unforeseen circumstances. Underpinning all of this is the consideration of every link in the construction chain. A simple and commonly used example is fishing huts on a beach. They are raised off the ground to avoid being flooded every time the tide comes in. It's a solution for adapting to every coastal scenario. Be careful, though. It's important not to mix up adaptation and resilience. Adaptation means making changes to avoid a potential risk, while resilience is to accept the risk and come out the other side without too much damage. That's why architects and engineers must not only factor in all the local climate risks to adapt their buildings to the local environment, but they also need to come up with solutions for bouncing back to make the building resilient should the risk materialize. Concretely, to protect a building from flooding, various strategies can be adopted. For instance, like with your example in the fishing huts, you can raise the building off the ground or else design it in a way that diverts the water around it, a common solution in wetlands. Yeah, flooding is just one risk, but the approach can be taken with any risk. What's more, manufacturers are working harder to develop materials capable of resisting extreme temperatures, not to mention solutions delivering improved thermal comfort, especially indoors. So if I get this right, are we expecting architects and urban planners to anticipate every single variation in the climate? Well, James, it's almost impossible to anticipate them all, but it is possible to formulate resilience strategies on a city scale. Look at the Rockefeller Foundation's 100 Resilient Cities program. Its 100 member cities are actively committed to building their resilience. They're sharing initiatives and best practices that will help them adapt in the long term. For example, Boston engaged with its communities on the subject of rising sea levels and hurricanes. And in Quebec, the focus is on the revegetation of urban areas. A growing number of construction firms are taking inspiration from traditional building practices in the world's hottest regions, which are accustomed to tackling a warm climate. And sometimes the solution is not all that complicated. For example, Amy, during heat waves, simply covering windows with shutters or planting shrubs around buildings can cool the ambient air. It's more difficult to render pre-existing buildings resilient, however. You're right, James, but it is possible and quite common, too. Insulation is just one area where it's easy to deal with this. Changing the windows and improving insulation on the inside or outside of a building are ways to make your home much more resilient. 
Construction firms are increasingly aware of the importance of a building's resilience, in particular for withstanding extreme climate events. Resilience solutions are also proliferating, but it's important for every industry player to be moving in the same direction. It sure is, James, especially since resilience mainly impacts already existing buildings. We also need to see incentive-based regulations to encourage renovations, which will result in a housing stock that is much more resilient. Constructing New Worlds by Saint-Gobain. Behind words, solutions, and innovations for a sustainable future.